Now we will roll for our surprise gift, and that is a four. A four gives us nothing. You know I'm very lucky with dice rolls. And here, exhibit eight. Hey everyone, this is Thagos, and today I got something pretty cool for you. Today I got another roll right for you. Um, this one is called Shoes Tactics. You can already see it at, uh, with the artwork and everything. This is quite something different. Um, so if you like Roll and Ride, I would highly suggest um, that you keep watching this video. Of course, I mean, I always want people to watch my videos, but this time this is quite um, quite different, Roll and Ride. So you might actually enjoy that quite a lot. Um, so this is a game that is not available yet. This will be on Kickstarter at the end of June, um, at least at the current plan. The designer has contacted me via mail and asked me to cover this game um, for the upcoming Kickstarter campaign. Um, as, as I said, at the end of June, it's planned to be released. Um, I took a quick look at the um, um, the prototype that he sent me um, I think I was just on vacation there and I liked it enough that I said yep yeah, sure I will definitely cover it when this video um, when this video is released it's possible that it's already um, that the Kickstarter project is already live maybe it takes another one or two weeks um, but as soon as I have the Kickstarter link to the, pro the link to the project I will put it in the description here so you can follow up on that um, so um, let me just quickly read the story and then we can get into the game Zhang Zhui, together with Zhang Liang and Zhang Bao, has declared, has declared the beginning of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, wreaking havoc on cities and villages across China. Liu Bei, a young man who can't stand seeing innocent people being harmed by the war, has sworn brotherhood with Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, and is now planning to build up an army to help the government quell the rebellion. The three men have requested assistance from wealthy individuals in town, and you have decided to aid them, knowing their great potential and heroic personalities. Now go ahead and join force with the brothers to become a part in the history of the Shu Nation. So this is a solo campaign roll and write game um, where you build like military tactics, um, trying to reclaim cities and lands from the um, rebellious army. Um, so you will, um, we will train our army here. Um, we will craft items, draw up schemes and tr travel recruiting heroes and everything to extinguish the rebellion. Um, and there is a set of chapters you play through. This is chapter one that I received from the designer. Um, so I haven't taken a look at the other chapters yet, but I can at least show you chapter one. What I will do today is um, I will quickly tell you how the game works, but in detail I will do that during my playthrough. Then I will play through the game. And after that, I will give you my review of it. And let's say my preview, because I mean, I haven't played the entire campaign, right? Um, so. Um, let me just quite quickly guide you through what you see here. So we have two sheets. This is our main sheet here on the right. That's the one we will be using the most. We do have a second sheet. It does not quite fit on screen, but that is every time it's important, I will pull it up. Um, but this is our second sheet that we need for the preparation phase and to know which tactics we can employ this round. Um, but I will get to that whenever it is, um, it is necessary, right? So what do we need for the game? Well, First of all, we need a die. Um, and you see here, not just any die, we actually need a 20 sided die. So that is a pretty funny story because I quickly read through the game at the beginning and through the rules and I thought like, okay, what do you need? Ah, a pen and a die and a few tokens. Okay, cool. So I put a six sided die there, um, a pen and a few tokens. And then um, I started playing. Um, or I started reading the rules and then it said like, okay, and then roll the 20 sided die. And I thought like, um, excuse me, what? Uh, and then I went back to the beginning um, where it says what uh, components you need. And then it actually said that 20 sided die. So you don't get that very often, but there's a really cool system. I will show that to you. And when we play, then you need a pen, pencil, whatever. You don't need to erase anything. Um, so a pen is fine. I'm using these um, that I already showed to you on my channel, the ones that I can erase um, using red, just because that's the channel color. And then you also need three tokens. Um, so I will put the three tokens here for now because we will need them over there. I will not use um, a dice tray because I mean, I just have one die, right? So that is not really important. All right, so what do we do? There are two phases we have to go through. First, we have the preparation phase. For the preparation phase, that's pretty cool. These are very small, but um, you have like a few symbols here that tell you what to do. First, we have the enemy defense. Um, we have either the, these closed, um, these, um, these closed flags, then they don't do anything. And these opened, 
flags, like the flags that are actually swaying in the wind, these um, tell us in which column we get how much damage. We receive how much damage. We don't want to receive damage at all, or at least not a whole lot. Um, after that, we roll our die. And this is where this sheet here comes in, um, at least in the first round. And each subsequent round, we also have our income phase in case we get something. Um, so we roll this die here, and this is an eight. And then we look at all these cool trees here and see there's the eight. And you see where the peaches are hanging, right? So that means these are the cards we have access to this round. So we will put them on the peaches here of the cards we have access to. And then we can use um, two top parts of the cards and one bottom part. I will show that how that I will show you how that works when we actually play the game. Um, and that is a really cool system. And then the next round, we just take the cards that we haven't used the round before. And then the next round we roll again. So we do that. So we roll four times and we push cubes four times. And that's the eight rounds we play because as you can see, we have eight rounds here. Um, and that is pretty much. And then also the um, enemy um, um, has a reaction depending on which cards um, we use how. I will show that to you when we play the game. And that is the preparation phase. And then we have the action phase. In the action phase, we use the stuff on the cards to um, recruit people, to forge, to um, advance the council tracks, or to travel. So we can get stuff there as well. And that is pretty much what we do. Our goal is up here. So our win condition this time is to end the game with at least 10 victory points. That's everything that has like these stars here. These, um, so there's a, there are stars, here are stars. There are some, um, Right, so we end the game with um, 10 victory points and also we need to um, complete one of these tracks in the council, so one of these squares um, consisting of four smaller squares or um, uh, fields. And that's what we need to do um, until the end of the eighth round. We need to do that to win. So we do have a clear win-lose condition, which I like a lot, but then we also have like points we can get. So you can actually replay a mission, try to win again, but then also try to increase your score. And not only that, there are also achievements up here. What these exactly do, I couldn't quite understand yet. I think that will be in the um, in the finished rules. This will be explained, but I think this is like a higher challenge. There is like a small text snippet in the, in the prototype rules that says, um, if the game is too easy, try to get these achievements. Um, but I don't know what you do like, with these achievements. Um, maybe it'd be cool to unlock something in the campaign. That would be really great. And that is just the very the gist of what we do to play. I don't want to bore you too much with all the specifics um, before we get started. So um, let us just play the first round. And during the first round, I will explain to you how everything works here. Let's do it like this. Okay, so we start with the, um, with the enemy defense. Um, so we cross out that first flag here that is closed, so it doesn't do anything. Um, then we roll the die. So let's roll the die. That is a 14. So now we take our sheet here. Give me a second. And then we look at the 14 over here. So we get access to that card, that card, and this card. So we put the tokens here in the middle, peaches. And then I will just put that here again. So we have everything um, in frame. So, and, um, so we rolled the die and then we choose um then we choose which two cards we want to use the top for and which card we want to use the bottom for the bottom is called the scheme so let's take a look here so um here you see like we have these these icons here right and these icons correlate to these four um these four sections here so the number one um which is this one here for example or this one um we could recruit people here Right? This is our drill ground where we can recruit people. If we recruit enough people, we can actually get access to these shapes that we can put on the battlefield to cover these arrows so we don't get damaged whenever there is a red flag. I will show it to you how that works later on. Then the two, this one here, the forge icon, that is for the forge, and we can complete these tracks. First of all, there are a few rewards we can get out of the way, but then we also have like specific um, benefits we get here. Like for rally at the top, that's the income. So we can actually, um, we can recruit soldiers each single round, which is really good. 
This one here gives us mapping. That means we can um, we can change the range of our attack because we also need to pay for the range. Um, then this one is the jewel. We just get five victory points, and these are throwing daggers um, that let us just destroy boxes here without having these shapes. Um, so that is pr these are all pretty cool. Um, I will definitely want to work on the rally one because I want um, these people each round. Then the number three, which would be that fan kind of thing, is the council. So we can um, we can then cross out these council things here, and then we just get the rewards that are inside there. Remember, we need to complete one of these tracks here in order to clear our objective. Um, and we can only cross out the council for the card that we have chosen the bottom part for, the scheme, right? Only that one we can um, work on this round. And then the number four, which is that horse here, that is for traveling. We start in the middle and then we can just um, go further down and choose any of these circles. We get these four rewards here in the circle. And if we if we enclose one of these areas here, then we also get what's what's in there. There are like specific rewards we can get there. There are like shapes, there are soldiers, there are die rolls that give us a mystery, a mystery surprise gift. So there are a few things we can get there. So that is pretty much the four areas here. How attacking works, I will show to you later on, but it's important. And then um, we also have like these schemes down here. So we could either spend two gold to gain um, to gain um, any any attack order here, like any of these four. Um, we don't have two gold so far. You can see here on the right, we only have one gold at the moment, right? So that doesn't really work. Um, destroy a field box. That box must be below one of the destroyed ones. We could destroy one of these boxes here, but we don't have a destroyed box yet. So we can't use that either. And that will just give us a surprise gift. So I will choose the bottom one for this one here. Right. We put that on the bottom peach here. And then for the other ones, we need to choose the top. We can only choose one scheme. So now we chose that one here. Um, so what happens now is this is the symbol that is active this round. This is this symbol tells us two things. First of all, we can only work on that council track this round. And also we look here for the enemy reaction here um, at that symbol and cross out the first um, the first box here. And that tells us that we will have to add reinforcements for the enemy. So we have one more field here. That one is not an issue, but that one and that one and these two, they do have arrows and we don't want that. Okay. so. I definitely want to recruit. Um, I want to work on the forge. The forge is really important. Um, and also the council, we could also work on that. Okay, so let's see. Um, so first of all, let's start with our surprise gift here, right? So um, that means we roll the die and that is a 20. And then we take a look at the glossary of chapter one. And we see here that we have like a table of surprise gifts. I hope you can see it well enough, but the 20 will give us one victory point and another roll for a surprise gift. So we will put like one victory point here. That's one of 10 we need. And let's roll another die that is 18. So we take a look here and that is a question mark. That means we get any order. Remember order are these four numbers here that give us access to these things. And we get one we can choose. Um, and we definitely want to, well, we could actually do the forge. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna take the um, the order, I'm gonna take a forge one. And then you see here, we have another forge. So when we use one of these um, orders, we put our cube on there. And we can also use the other one. Whenever we use the other one, we just put our cube up here. So we know that the entire car is used, right? So we will use another forge. And that means now, beginning next round, we will get income. We will get um, a soldier, which is really nice. Okay, so, um, so we did that. And then we have the travel one here. Um, what we can also do is we can also spend a gold um, to, um, to change the number up or down one of the order. So we could change a four into a three, which would be the council again. But let's actually take the four here and start traveling because these will also give us quite good rewards. So we can start traveling here. Let me just fill it out like this. So it's a little bit more clear. Um, so this card is used, this card is used. And here, um, let's first travel again. So, um, 
we want these shapes maybe later on but soldiers are very important as well so i think hmm i think i would actually like to finish two of the council at the moment so let's go over here for our traveling so we get one of the council ones we can only um, fill in the council for this shape here so let's take why don't we take another travel option i think that's a pretty good idea so let's cross out that one here so we can travel again and let's travel here because now we have enclosed this one here so we get um we get a soldier and that is, um, so we have two, we have the foot soldiers and also we have the horsemen, so the cavalry, and this is a cavalry soldier. So we get one of those. Um, and let me just, and then whenever we get a soldier, either from one of these boxes or from there or wherever they are, or from here, from our rally or there, then we can fill out one of these shapes. And this is where now the main thing of the game comes in. Whenever we have one of these shapes completely filled out, these cannot be rotated, these can be rotated. We place we can place them on the battlefield with using one of these orders. I will show you how that works. We also need a specific range and everything. And um and then we can cover up these arrows. And we need to cover up these arrows because otherwise, for example, let's say we are in round three, then you see this red flag. And then you look in the, into that column and count all the arrows. And there are two at the moment. And these two arrows will then deduct two health. And if we lose six health, we lose. And there's no way to heal as far as I know. So this is going to be pretty tough. So we need to cover up these two arrows and these very soon as well. So let's see what we could do. So we could, hmm, um, actually, let me see what we could do. We could actually, with that shape, we could cover these four arrows because we can rotate that one. That might be an idea. Can we get that until the third round? I think, I think we should be able to, we just need three more. We can get, we get one the round there, but that is too late. We could get one there and well, it's going to be tough to get all of those. I'm not sure we can get those. I think we should do it differently. Yeah, I think we should take maybe that three one here first and also get a few there. Um, one, two, three. I think we should start. Um, let's fill out this one here, the long one first. And also we should get this one because with this one, we can get that one. Yeah, I think that is going to work. Or maybe that one here. Let's see how we do that. I think that is fine for now. Okay, so we got that one. And now we still have that one council one left here. So um, then let's cross out this one here because then we get another surprise gift. And I would really like that. So now we exhausted all the cards. Now we will roll for our surprise gift. And that is a four. A four gives us nothing. You know I'm very lucky with dice rolls. And here, exhibit A. All right, so, and that was already the entire round, right? Because we used our cards, that was the action phase, and now we get go to round two. And that is how you play the game. Um, you will learn a few more things as we play, but um, that is pretty much how the game works. So we start with the preparation phase again with the enemy defense, closed flag, nothing happens. So I want to fill up this one here i don't know if i can do it um if i can do it in time but let's see if i can so first now we have our income phase so here we have that ready we are full so we get our first soldier and i will fill in that one here so we need two more here we can probably get that um so income phase is done we cross that out and now we shift our die, uh, our cubes here because um in the second round, we rolled the first round, and the second round, we shift our cubes to the cards that we haven't used yet, right? So we go there, there, and there. That is a great system because this ensures that you can always, like within two rounds, you have access to everything. And that is really good. That is good for planning. Okay, so I definitely want these two here because then we can finish up that here. Um, this won't give us range and attack, which is great as well in case we need it. I think that's what I'm going to do. So let's go top, top and bottom here. Um, so that works. And now we have the um, 
we are here at the bottom that's the scheme so this is where the enemy will react so we have to cross out this one here and we have another box here now we see there is another arrow there so we need to get rid of that quite soon as well okay and that is the preparation done and now we have our action phase okay so let's start it uh, that's range and attack we will see about that but first i will do this one and that will give us um either that uh, the leftmost free box on this in this track or on this track but we want soldiers so i'm going to go here and fill in that soldier here and then i also will do the same thing here cross with that one and get that soldier here so now you see that shape is completed and we first of all we um we we circle that and now we can use this one as an attack which we will need to do here um it probably would have been better to actually use this shape here that actually would have been better um well it doesn't really matter that's fine too so um okay so we have that shape now and now we want to use it as an attack right and how we do that is as follows so um let's let's say i wanted to put that one here which i want to do because i want to cover these two arrows before the next round so we don't receive any damage right so um what i need to do then is um you see here that there are numbers here on the left i hope you can see it but that says like one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11. So this is this is the range. So um, and then you see we have like these two rows we are touching, right? With that shape. That's row two and three. So I need, either need a two or a three as an order that is still free in order to launch that attack. That's the range, right? So I need to use any order to launch that attack. And for this, this since I want to put it here, I either need a two or a three order, which I have. I have both of them so that's fine so i can actually launch that attack um so let's see what do i want to do this round do i want to continue the forge i think i do because if i use the forge on this track here then i get one of these guys and i want three guys by next round so i can cover up more stuff here right so uh yes so let's use that three one here um to launch that attack so um we will so we will um, this one we will draw in here so here here and here so you see that shape is now in here we cross that one out so we can't use it anymore that one is used we don't have access to that anymore and we get those two victory points that were written in there and you see that either need a three or a two in terms of range so we will use that three there so this card is exhausted we could have also um, up to plus or, plus or minus um, two range in, it, uh, in an attack, but we didn't use that. So let me just put that there exhausted because we don't need to use it anymore. And all we have left now is um, we only have that forge left. And I will cross out this one here in that track. So we get another soldier. I will put that one in here, um, a cavalry soldier. And that card is exhausted as well. And that is pretty much, now we see also how we attack. And this is how the game continues. Um, one thing I want to also tell you, um, so you see, like we have these soldiers here on the right and they all have a reward associated with them. So if we are able to fill an entire row, then um, we receive, um, so then we can cross out that guy here and receive that reward, which is really cool as well. Also, we should try to cover as much as possible because if we, um, if we are able to, fulfill that win condition we still need to calculate our score and let me tell you how the score works so scoring works like this that we um, have all our victory points and then we deduct from that we deduct from it half of the number of the uh, untouched fields so the fields that are not filled out times the number of guys we did not defeat um, minus um, all the health we lost so it is quite tough this is a very tough game and I'm not, I'm not sure if we are able to win, but this is how you calculate your score at the end. Um, right. So let's see how that works. Okay. Um, and that was our round. So now the next preparation phase. Now I see we have that open flag here. We cross that out and now we look at that column at all the arrows, but there are none. We covered these two, so we don't receive any damage. Then we have our income phase. So we receive the next soldier here so that is another cavalry guy so you see we have our next shape down that is great so we can cover up even more stuff here that is wonderful okay um so and then we roll the die that is an 18 
So let's get out our sheet here. Just give me a second to put that here. So um, 18, you see down here. So we get access to that card and the two top cards. So it's kind of similar to what we had last round. Okay. And then we um, have to choose what we want to use. So actually, well, we should keep filling out stuff here. But you see, we won't get soldiers for a while except for one here. So we would have to get soldiers some other way. So traveling would be a good idea, actually. We could continue with the forge. That would give us more distance, which we need, because we need um, that mapping here so we can um, change our range um, up to two. That for free. That is really good. Um, we can also change the range. So you see, we can only get up to four with our orders, right? So one, two, three, and four, that's all the orders we have. If we want to have a further range, um, we need to pay gold for that. So I think one per range. Um, so if we want to get to the nine, for example, we would have to pay five gold. We have one at the moment. We don't get any gold so far, but with that, we can actually at least change it up to two. And that is a really good thing to do. So, um, so what do we want? I want to continue the forge. Um, so how about let's let's look at the let's look at the uh, schemes first. So here we get gold. That map does not matter in um, in scenario one. Um, for for mission one, we don't need that. So either we get one gold. The rage in an attack doesn't really matter now. I think I want to have a four in attack. Ah uh, well, actually I want to have a four. Uh, well, but I do have one gold, so that would be fine. So do we want to have a mystery gift here? A mystery roll again, like a surprise gift, or do I want to have one gold? Gold is very important. Can we go get gold some other way this round? Not really. Um, so will we get some gold or not? I'm not 100% sure. <sighs> that gold is important, but... Hmm, I really want that surprise gift because it can give us some really cool stuff, right? It can give us some really good stuff. Um, so, but I want to travel as well. No, let's not. Let's be safe. Let's take that gold. Uh, let's take this one here and these ones. But then again, if I took this one, I could further this one here. That would be important as well. We can get to that later. We still have a few rounds. Well, not too many, but I think we are fine. Yeah, I think we are fine. So let's just do it like this for now. Yeah, let's do it like this for now. Okay, so um, we have this one here at the bottom. So um, the enemy will react and add another box. Okay, so let's see. Let's first of all, let's give us that Gold. So what we do here is we just circle one of these golds. And when we use it, we just cross it out. Okay. And then let's first, let's, no, let's not travel because we actually need to launch our attack. You know what? Let's use the four here because I want to use that row here to launch our next attack. Mm, let's launch this attack here. I will actually not rotate it. I will just keep it like this. I will put it in this row. I need a four for that. That's what I'm spending here. That's fine. So let's just do it like this, right? Um, so we launched that attack and we receive these, those three victory points. We already have six of 10, but remember, we also need to deduct a lot of points down here. So that is going to be pretty tough. Okay. So um, we did that. And now we um, we will not be able to probably do this one here, right? Well, hmm. Actually, if we we can travel with gold, we could travel once. Um, we could maybe fill this one here. Um, it would not be very a very good move to do but we could try it right um because if we fill this one here then we get this shape here that's like a diagonal shape of two boxes we could then put that here we would also overwrite that box again so one of these boxes won't help us but at least we would be able to not receive damage next round but i think it would be more important to actually work on getting these arrows down here right because that one damage 
will not be that bad. We should rather work on these two. So um, how can we get these two? Next round, we can destroy a field box below one of the destroyed ones. Um, so, you know what? Let's travel. Let's travel and get this shape down here because I have a pretty cool idea. So I will spend one gold right here to change that three up here to a four so we can travel. And then I will fill out that one and we get this this order, uh, this this attack pattern here, right? And this one um, I want to use immediately. I want to put it here. So I need a three or a four and that we don't have that, but I will spend another gold to turn this two here into a, to turn that two into a three. And then we can actually use that one. So like this and like this. So this one gives us another cavalry guy. Um, which shape do we want to work on next? I think I want to work on this one, but it will take a while until we can complete it. I think, no, let's, re well, they both take the same time to complete, but which one would be better? I think for what I want to do, this one would be better. So let's cross out one here. And also we cross out that uh, travel um, order so we can travel again. Um, and I would say, let's travel here. Let's travel here because then we get another order with a one. So another drill ground order. Um, so we can cross out one. Let's cross out. Hmm. Which one do we want to cross out? If you cross out that one, then we get another soldier, which is great. But if we cross out that one, then we get another forge order which would be nice as well because then we can continue our mapping and we need to continue our mapping so so yeah let's cross out that one here so we can cross out that forge here and you see there are like chain reactions here right and we didn't even use the last order yet and we still have one one order here um oh yeah well well before i do that we encased that um mystery gift a surprise gift again so let's roll that's a 15 and a 15 gives us another forage order okay so which track do we want to continue now i think the throwing daggers can be really helpful later on and also we need gold so i will still work on that track here okay and then we get one gold back that is wonderful okay so this gets really confusing did i do everything oh i forgot to cross out all of that I did do everything except that one order here. So let's do the one order so we can do the drill ground again. And I will cross out that one here so we get another cavalry guy um, right there. And that is it for this round. Poo, that was a lot. Okay, so round number four. Um, we cross out that open flag and we check that column. Actually, there is one arrow, so we will receive one damage now. So let me cross it out and that means that we now have one of six damage and this one negative point will be subtracted here okay so and now um in the fourth round we just push our cubes again so we go to this card that card and this card here um so what i wanted to do now is i want to use this scheme here i will show you why because um, well, well, because it says destroy a field box. That box must be below one of the destroyed ones. So these are all destroyed here, right? So um, I want to destroy that one and that is below that box there, right? So we can destroy that one. But also you see, we completed one row. I forgot about that. So we actually eliminated that guy and our reward is another surprise gift. I like these surprise gifts. That is really exciting. That is a 14. So let's see what we get we get another travel order. That is wonderful. Then I would say, ooh, we could actually take this one here and then we would have another shape that we can use later on. Ooh, that would be nice, actually. What is wrong with you? That would actually be pretty nice. I think we do. I will do that. So we, now we have access to this order here, uh, to this pattern. That's like just... If, I don't know if you can see it, but that's just two boxes beside one another. Nice. Also, what did I do here? Did I 
not finish that track here. What did I do? I guess I for I continued there instead of finishing that one here. Um, so, well, that's too bad. Then I will just have to finish that one as soon as possible. Okay, so we um, and now we destroy a field box. Um, let's destroy destroy this one down here. That means next round we don't receive any damage either. Um, and now we have this and the next round to cover these two boxes. I will not be able to do that, but at least one of them. Um, this one down here. So we definitely need to finish that one down here. Also, I need to finish the forge. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. Um, okay, so we have... Well, first of all, let's take that one here, right? The attack, uh, the, the order there, and um, let's just get us another gold like this okay then we have a three um oh i did not do the reaction by the enemy yet down here that means that they get another reinforcement here but also we lose an order so one of these three we are not able to use anymore um then let's not travel this round um let's use that forge here so then we exhausted that card to finish that one here so now we have that mapping and also let's take the three here because since we use the scheme of that symbol we can continue that council here we will do that with the three here so we get three victory points there is one with an x here x means that we will count all the tactics we use so far that's one two and three and we get that many victory points so we should wait with that a little bit to maximize our points okay and that is already the round. I forgot to cross out everything. Also, I forgot to take that income here. So you would have gotten another soldier. Uh, let's just take, I don't know. doesn't really matter, this one here. Okay, that was a little bit, that was really a little bit crazy here, but I hope that I didn't forget anything now. Okay, so now we are in round five. So let's see, let's count all the arrows here. There are none. I covered the ones that were damage us, so that is good. And then we get our income. Now I don't forget. We get another cavalry guy. So we need one more cavalry guy in order to launch an attack. And then I want to launch that here because we get a lot of stuff here. Okay. And this in this round, we need actually to roll again. That is a three. So if we take our sheet here, um, the three, so we get access to the same cards we just had last round. Actually, that's funny. That is quite the coincidence. So let them put all in the middle here and then see what we want to do and destroy a field box below one of the destroyed ones well we could destroy we could destroy that that arrow here right that would be for round eight the last round so that might be a pretty good idea actually we can't spend two gold to get any order we have two gold but uh, i'm not sure at this round each time you destroy an arrow we get a victory point or one of these guys two victory points we won't we will only be able to destroy one arrow this round that's one victory point that's not a whole lot i will do that field box here this and this okay so let's destroy that field box first here oh no first we have the reaction by the enemy so the enemy gets another reinforcement here and also we lose an order again this round okay let's see uh, let's see which one we will use. So destroy a field box. I will destroy this one here for sure. Like this. Okay. Um, so we did that. And now let's see. We have these four orders here. Um, okay. So we want to finish this one here. We do that with the one here. That would be fine. Um, we could and uh, then we also need to launch the attack and we need a five for that but we have that plus two range so a three would be enough so one and three these two would be enough we will i will leave the council for now i think because we need more points but well, actually hmm oh and we also have that order here that we cannot use yet probably we definitely need more gold as well we definitely need more gold as well. Okay, um, the forge, we could continue the forge. We could travel. If we traveled here, we would get a gold, which would be okay. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do. So first of all, let's take the one here. So we, I will cross off this one here. Oh, I've, 
No, I did not forget the income this time. No, I didn't. Um, so um, that means I get another cavalry. That is great. So we have that one at our disposal. And then I will use the three here in order to launch the attack because I need a five at least. And with that plus minus two for mapping, um, that is fine. So I will cross off this shape here. So the next arrow is actually concealed. Um, so we get one gold, which we definitely need. And we get another um, order here for the top. Um, and I think I will take this one again, maybe, because we need gold. We need a lot of gold. So how much gold do we need? Uh, I need four plus six, uh, plus two, that's six. Um, six, uh, three, three gold. We have four gold already. That is good. We're doing well. Um, I will tell you in a minute why this is so important to me. Okay, and then, um, so this one is done. We lose one order, right? Um, because of that enemy reaction down here. So um, we will have to either not do the forge or not travel. But I think I would rather I would rather want to travel because um, I need gold. So I will skip on that one, but I will travel um, here. So we get that gold. Nice. Look at that. We have five gold. That is really nice. Okay, that was this round. Um, did I forget anything? I don't think so. Then the next round. Here we have the enemy defense again. Open flag. That means that we check this column here and there actually is one arrow, so we lose one health again. I was not able to uh, really um, defend against that. Okay, then we get our income right here. So we get another soldier up here, which is nice. We just need one more, so we have another order. Oh yeah, we could do pretty well now. I have a few good ideas. Um, and then we just push our cubes around again. So up here, up there, and here. Uh, mystery gift would be cool. Gold would be even more important. Plus one, oh, plus up to two range in an attack. That's even better. Because then this is pretty much just saving me two gold. That's better than getting one. So I will definitely go here, down here, and then up there, and up there. Um, so we have the um, we have the top one here as our scheme. So the enemy reaction will be two reinforcements. So we do have an arrow there again, which is, oh, that is a problem. That is a problem, but well, actually not, actually not. We can work around that. So, and then um, I will use one of the ones here to um, go here to the drill ground and get another guy. That is important because now I want to launch that attack. And later on, I want to launch this one here. So um, I want to launch this attack here. I need a nine for that. Um, but we get two for mapping. So I need a seven. I get two for that. So I need a five. So I will spend one gold and then use the four here. That is exactly enough to launch that attack. And I will cover it like this because I cannot rotate it. I will cover it like this. That was actually stupid. Because these arrows won't hurt me anymore in the future. You know what? Sorry about that. Um, I'm not trying to cheat here, but that was a really stupid move. I will not do that. I will definitely not do that. Um, let me do something different. Um, because with that one, I can cover that one later. Um, um, <laughs> actually, I will use the same one, but I will put it down here. Um, because then I we can do a few things. So instead, I will do that here. But that means that I don't have to spend that one gold because the range is much less. All right, that was a little bit, that was a little bit um, crazy here. Um, but that's how it worked. And also, I need to rewind everything. So now I need a range of five, right? Um, I get plus two here. I get plus two here. So I only need a range of one. And that's what I'm going to do. Instead of spending that four, instead I will spend, I think, 
that two here instead, I think. Um, like this. I think that's much better. So I think now I corrected everything. So and now we finish that row as well. So we can cross off that guy and we get another uh, surprise gift. Let's hope it's something good. 13. A 13 is... Oh, we lose one... We actually lose one um, one victory point. So let me just erase that one. But I will get a roll again, which is a two. And a two gives us a coin. Okay, so we traded in a victory point for a coin. That is not a great deal. Okay, um, so I shouldn't have used that range, right? But, well, I did. I did use it, so whatever. Okay. So, and all we have left now, we still have that one and that four here. Um, let's see, that one is good, that four is traveling. We could, it could travel here. That would be interesting because you see here, there are two jade pieces. And if I enclose both jade pieces, I get access to that jade and can I can then just copy any uh, any tactics in in the drill ground here, which is really, really good. So I think I'll work on that. So let me just travel here. Um, so I have the first part of the jade. And also I get another forge thing here. I will put that there. So we traveled. And then we still have that one order here. Um, I could change it to a two for forge. So I would have access to th two throwing daggers. Hmm. That would be pretty nice as well, because then we would have two throwing daggers. And with that, we can do quite a few things. Uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, let me spend one coin. I have enough of those to um, do that, to change it to a two, use that one here. And now we have two throwing daggers. We can use these as an action. Um, to destroy a box that is adjacent to another box. So I could destroy this one and that one, for example, and just finish off two rows, right? That would be pretty good, actually. Um, you know what? I have them now. I still in my action phase. I can just do it already. Um, so let's do that. Let's use both throwing daggers, destroy that box here. So we get another soldier up here. Let's just take this one. Um, also, we finish off this here one and get another soldier. Um, yeah, let's get another soldier up here. And then we use the other throwing dagger to finish off this row here. And this finishes off that guy. And we actually get um, any order we want to. And let me think. We could get... Well, we, I could travel again. Yes, yes. I will travel again with that. Um, and then let's travel here because then here I get another order for the drill ground and then either one gold or these two guys. But I think these two guys would be better because then we can try to finish off that one as well. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So then let's finish off these two here. Okay, wow, that was a really, really strong move. It could have been better if we just had done it here differently, but okay, that's fine. Okay. And now it's the seventh round. In round seven, we don't lose. Um, so there's a, like a gray flag, a close flag. So we don't lose any life, but there wouldn't be any arrows either. So that's, that doesn't matter. And now we actually roll the die again. All right, let me just roll for real like this. 13. Um, I think that is similar to the one we have now. So give me a second. 13 is down here. So one there, one there, and one there. So it's pretty similar to the one we just had. Um, okay, so let's see. We need to finish our council here. We definitely need to. This round, each time you destroy arrow, we get one victory point. Um, okay. Up to two range in an attack. Two range is good. I would want that, to be honest. But then again, we really need to finish our council here, like one of the council things. Otherwise, we will have an issue. So let me go down here, up there and up there. Um, that will be pretty tough now, but that is just the way it is. 
because um, now, oh, first we get our income. So we get another one of these guys here, which is really great. Look at this. This is wonderful. Um, and then, actually, we have way too many cavalry, guys. That is interesting. So investing too heavily won't be helping anymore because we won't have any more orders. But okay, that is okay. So now we have our enemy reaction. Um, so the... Uh, what, what am I doing here at the moment? Ah, yeah, the enemy reaction, right? So we are using this one scheme down here. So we will have to use the last box here. That means the enemy gets three more, um, three more reinforcements, which is a lot. Okay. Well, but that's just the way it goes, I suppose. All right. So what else do we do? Um, so first of all, let's do that mystery gift thing. Let's see what we get. That is always exciting. That is a five and a five will get it. Another cavalry guy. Uh, well, that means now we have everything full. So continuing on this row won't make any sense except for getting these four victory points. Okay, so we have that order here now as well. Okay, so now we need to launch a lot of attack orders. We have one, we almost have another one and we have one there. Um, we need to travel. Traveling is very important as well. So let's see, we can travel here, but we do have some gold. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so um, let me use that one here just in order to finish. Oh no, I can't finish this one here, wait. Um, first things first, let's do, let's use one of the threes in order to finish that council here. No, no, I want to attack first. No, 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 I want to attack first. Um, because then we get more victory points. Um, so let me see. I want to cross off these two um, because otherwise we will get too damaged. We don't want that. Um, and for that, which one would I use the best? Well, actually this one. This one I could use the best for that, but there's no way to get one of these guys at the moment. Um, not really. I invested too heavily into the other ones here. Um, so we will have to do it a little bit differently. We might have to launch two attacks actually. No, we can use one attack, this one. We can launch that one because I can rotate it and then we would have it like this. That means I would need an eight to launch that one. Mm, uh, plus minus two here, so that is a six. And the highest one I have is a three. So I need to spend three gold in order to launch that attack. Let's do that. And then I will just use one of these three here and I can use this attack and I will rotate it so it fits just like this. That is pretty nice. And then we get four glory points. These are actually called glory points, these stars and victory points is the one, is then the stuff at the end. Okay, so now we covered all arrows. What we now need to do, now we need to fill up as many rows uh, as possible. We have, we could finish this order at some point. Uh, well, if we travel once more, we could finish up that one. Mm, but we can also soon copy one of these things here. Um, and what would I copy? Probably the three one here to finish this one here. That would be nice. That would be pretty nice. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So let us use that three here. Mm, to travel, we need to spend one coin to increase it to a four. Then I will travel here. And now we have the Jade completed. Um, and then we will copy this one here just for the first row. Um, so I just need a one to actually be able to use it. So let's use that one. But well, then again, I have a I have plus minus two range, but still, I mean, we still need to use an order. So I will use that one here in order to launch that attack. So we used our Jade here and then we can just finish off this row. We will get another forge. Let's put that in here because maybe it can still finish off the throwing daggers. And um, we finished off this row. We will get another order. Um, for that order, I will use Either we travel to get another soldier, which, which, which would be good, um, or we, no, we continue here. I will use that for forging. So this means I get another surprise gift. That is a eight. 
eight is one victory point and one coin. Wow, nice. Like this. And then we still have that two here. I will use that two for the forge to finish off that one here. That means we have two throwing daggers again. We can use these to, um, to fill in two single, um, single uh, boxes, but I will wait because I might do that next round here, depending on what I will fill out with my orders. And that is already this round. So last round. Um, so first we have our enemy defense um, in this row, in this column, there are no arrows, so we don't get any damage anymore. Um, that is wonderful. Then we will get our income. Um, that is another soldier. I think I forgot the income last round actually, but then we get that soldier here that we needed to finish that off. That is wonderful. So we finished all of the, we finished all patterns pretty much except the one here. Nice. I don't know if it's possible to finish, finish all of these probably, but yeah. Oh, I did not do that. Oh no, I will have to do this round. I will have to. Okay, now we um, now we push our cubes there, there, and there. And well, there's no other way. I will have to um, do this down here so we can finish off this one. There's no other way. So let's do that. Then we have the enemy reaction. Um, that means that there will be three more reinforcements. Well, I can only add two. Um, so we have all the reinforcements here actually. And um, then let's use that scheme here. That scheme says destroy a field box. It's a field box below one of the destroyed ones already. So uh, let's take the single one here. And uh, that gives us another coin. Okay, so, and now we need to see how we can maximize everything. So first of all, first things first, before I forget that, we need to finish that, um, that council here. Um, well, actually, let's try to attack first. So let's see. Um, how can we finish off rows? What do we have left? We have this one here and that one. Um, well, these will, these with these two, if we could launch both, we would be able to finish two rows combined with the throwing daggers. That would be possible. Would that be possible? Yeah, that would be kind of possible. Um, but we can't finish off three rows. Ah, almost. Almost. Oh, I've used these two throwing daggers, right? No, no, I didn't use them yet. Oh, I still have the throwing daggers. Well, then we can finish off three rows. So, okay, let's do that. So, um, I need, I want to put that here. So that would be row, um, that would be row seven. Um, Seven minus two, that's five. So I need an order of four plus one coin. Let's do that like this. And you can use this one here. We will get two victory point, uh, two glory points. And then um, I will put that here like this. That will also give us another coin, which is good because we need to launch another attack. All right. And then I want to use this one here. I have, this is just two right next to each other. Um, and that one um, I will put down here. That is seven plus minus two, so minus two, that's five. So I don't have a four anymore. I have a two, so I need three gold coins, which I just have three gold coins and a two in order to use that one. So we will use that one. I will put that here like this and that will grant us first of all one council order which is great so we can finish off that here so we have actually finished that off which is important for our win condition and um, also we get as many um, glory points as the number of tactics we used we used one two three four five six um, seven the jade counts eight, nine tactics. I think the most tactics you could use is 10 and I used nine. So that is great. So we get nine glory points, which is amazing. Um, all right. So we did that and also we finished off that row. So we get five more glory points. That is good. Okay. So we just have these two left here. Let's see what we can do. Uh, the one doesn't really help us here at all. Well, no, first of all, let's use our throwing daggers. 
Yeah, let's use our throwing daggers here to finish off these two as well. So we finish off that row and we get another four glory points. And now we have these two left. Actually, with those two, I can't do a whole lot. I don't have any gold left. The one I, well, I could get another gold. Do I need gold? Gold doesn't give us any points at all. And the two, the forge doesn't really help us either. So these two are pretty much lost, right? There's nothing I can do with those two. I think, maybe you see something I can do, but I don't see anything. So I suppose there's nothing I can do. So whatever, I would just use the one here to get gold, I guess. And I would use the two here to cross off a row here. Uh, like this, this track doesn't really help us at all. So we are through. That was the last round. We are completely through. So, and now we need to sum, of, sum up all our points. So first of all, we will um, we will sum up all the glory points we have. So there's four, there's nine, 18, 20, 24, 26, 29, 30, 33. That is pretty good because we need 10 to actually win the game. And um, I think we will not lose too much here. So then I um, have the number of untouched field boxes. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Half of that is five. Um, and it's and then we also all the guys we did not defeat. That is one, two, three guys. So that is 15 points. You see, that's pretty punishing, right? That's 15 points that we need to deduct. And also we need to deduct these three points here for our lost health. So that is 33 minus 3, that's 30 minus 15, that is 15 victory points, and we would have needed 10. So we actually made it. We finished um, one track in the council, that is the first win condition, and also we got more than 10 points, um, or at least 10 points. But it was close, you see, like 5 points more, and we did got so many glory points, I think we played really well, and still was really close. So you see how hard this game is, right? Um, this is a really tough game to win, but that makes it fun. Um, yes, and that was my playthrough of Shoes Tactics. Um, now let me speak a little bit about the game, um, just give you my little preview of at least the first chapter so you know how I like the game and if I would recommend it, yes or no. So um, let's start with the most obvious one first, and that is the theme. So the theme itself, um, it the theme is incorporated really well into the gameplay. Um, definitely, I need to stress that. Um, it all makes quite a lot of sense, right? So you, um, in the drill ground, you just recruit your guys, right? And if you have enough guys, you can build specific formations that you send onto the battlefield. That makes sense. You have your messengers that travel and they find new soldiers and they find new tactics, new ideas there. They find jade pieces, whatever that is a little bit mystic, but it works. The forge, well, the forge, um, thematically, I think it's okay. That could have been anything pretty much, but it does make sense because you are trying to, maybe forge, I don't know if forge is the right word, would be something like maybe engineering or maybe, I don't know, um, um, just trying to think of tactics or whatever, like rally mapping. This is more like inventions or whatever, but forge is fine. And the council works as well, I suppose. But in general, the theme does work really well um it is not my theme usually right i don't need like these war themes but this is way different than most war games like world war ii or whatever which i couldn't care less about this is definitely a little more on the lighter side here um and also you're not going into war you're actually defending yourself so that's fine with me so the theme does work well um also um the art style i like the art style a lot this looks really clean the um the, the symbols look really clean. As soon as you know what the symbols mean, you can really easily identify them, right? You don't need the rules anymore. You don't look, need to look into the rules because you know what the symbols mean and you just play. Um, also, I love the art style over here as well with the with the trees and everything. This is really cool. Um, so that works really well. Um, next thing would be the rules actually. Usually I don't talk about rules too much, but here I really want to talk about them because first of all, let me just show you the rules. Uh, I have them over here. Um, I didn't even need them, but um, need them for the playthrough again today, but uh, I just have them here just in case. First of all, the layout of the rules is great. Look at all these colors here. Uh, look, 
like you have like a description of the two sheets like every sheet is uh, has a description what exactly what is on these sheets how the cards look you have a quick game overview so you kind of know what the game is about and then you get into common terms and then you get into the gameplay and then you have your preparation phase the action phase everything is laid out really well it looks great and it um it's just explained really well um the rules are quite tough at the beginning. You really need to need to get through a lot of rules to understand this game. This is not a pick up and play, print to play, right? You need to really get into the rules or watch this video. <laughs> then you should also have the gist of how to play. Um, so I hope after watching this video, you only you don't need to go into the rules too much anymore. Just maybe reference them a little bit, like at least for the surprise gift and everything, and for the for the symbols. But so you should know now how the game works. But even if not. This rule book's really well made. Um, I needed quite a while to get through that because it's already it's still a prototype, and there were a few parts that weren't a hundred percent clear. But after I went through the entire book and I reread a few things and I tried the game, there were no questions left, and that is a big compliment. Usually, in most in, in a lot of prototype copies that I get for games, I need to um, actually um, contact the designers and ask them, hey, you know what? This part isn't quite clear. I don't quite understand this one. I, I, I want to understand everything well enough so I can actually do an informed review or playthrough for you guys, right? Because you deserve the best playthrough I can give you. And that's always what I'm trying to do, giving you the best videos I possibly can at the moment with the equipment I have and the time I have. So, but for shoot tactics, no problem. Maybe I did a few mistakes here or there, okay? Then maybe that's on me. Maybe I didn't understand something correctly. I mean, these, these are the prototype copies, but the way I see it now, um, these rules are really well done. There are still a few things that could be done a little bit clearer. So if the designer wants some input on there, feel free to let me know, um, then I can tell you. But in general, the rules are really well done, really well laid out, graphically great. Um, they are quite detailed and that is great. So you need to read lots, uh, uh, quite a bit more than another for other printed plays, for other roll and writes. But um, after you have read the rule book, you pretty much know everything because there's so much detail in here. That is wonderful. Um, so that is um, about this. Um, and now let's talk about gameplay. So um, the gameplay does work well, as you can see, like all these systems really, um, they really um, work together well. And that's one thing that, n that not all games get right. That's one thing that I find really important in games and that really elevate uh, that really elevates games for me, right? So let's say there's a game that I think is pretty good, but as soon as all the game mechanisms really um, work well together and some are all like in, are interconnected and everything, that really elevates the game experience and I like the game more. And this is the case here um, because you have these cards and with these cards, you can do everything pretty much, right? Um, need uh, need a different need different orders? Well, just use bribery. That's how it's called. It's called in the game rules. You can just use bribery, use gold coins to actually change the orders. That works well thematically, and you have your mitigation mechanism here with that gold. You don't need gold for anything else. You need to, don't need to buy anything, but you can. You spend gold to bribe guy to bribe the people to actually do different use different orders. That is wonderful. That is really great. Um, the cards work really well. This is a genius system here with the with the trees. Um, that is really great. I first thought you have a d20, okay, and then you roll for six cards. That doesn't work. And then I saw these trees and I'm like, ah, I see. So I haven't actually taken a look at that if there are all combinations in here that exist. Um, I don't quite know about that, but I don't know, maybe. Um, I guess that all combinations are in here, but that works really well. Um, you just roll and you get three random orders every second turn. But it's still not too random because, first of all, you do have that mitigation mechanism with the bribery, right? With the gold coins here. But also, every other round, you just shift the cubes to the other cards. So within those eight rounds, you will have used each card three times. Right? Um, and, well, three times? Is that right? Eight rounds times three, 24, six, no, four times. Um... Yeah, right, right. Sorry, my mistake. You will have used every card exactly four times. So um, you don't know the order of the cards you will use, but you will use all the cards four times. So there is no game where you will say, well, I only got that card once, so I couldn't do anything. No, no, you got all the cards. You got them all. 
Just the order was different and you have to work with your order. And that is where the gameplay comes in, where your tactical decisions come in. And that is genius because that is just such a great system because it just, it, it works. It gives you all the tools you need to win. I don't think it's possible for a game to be completely unwinnable because you get all the cards, you get all the tools you need. You just need to use them in the order they come. And you have a lot of decision space there, right? Um, with the top and the bottom one, the system works wonderfully. That is great. And also you have the preparation phase here again. You have everything to cross off here. It's really, you don't need the rules anymore because everything is here you need. That is wonderful. Um, as I said, the symbols are really clear. Um, the theme works well for the gameplay. Um, the point system is really well done as well because you said you see that I played very well and still it was quite tough. Uh, maybe it's a little bit too tough for the first mission, to be honest, because if the next missions come out, they should get harder, right? They should get more interesting and more hard uh, and harder. And I'm not 100% sure um, how much harder they can get. I mean, they will get harder, but I thought this was pretty tough here. And I, I'm... I would say that I did quite a lot of good decisions here. Yes, I could have used other enemy reactions here. I progressed here quite quickly, but you see, I filled in a lot of stuff and yeah. Another thing that works really well is the uh, is the uh, is the um, snowball effects you have here. You saw like like the first uh, the first few turns were really quick, right? I had like my four orders, then I crossed something off here. Okay, cool. But you saw like when I crossed something off here and then I filled in something here and then I got another order here, which gave me another order there, which granted me a coin and with that coin I could do something else. There were moves like turns that took quite a long time because I had so much stuff I could do. And this is great. This is like this snowball effect that I, al that or I already love in larger games um, like um, like Castle Burgundy, for example, my, one of my absolutely favorite games. Of course, it's a different game. It's much bigger and you can't compare these two. But just that snowball effect, right? This, this potential of combinations is just great in that game. And of course, you have it on a much smaller scale and it's a way different game. So don't tell me in the comments that I'm comparing these two games because I definitely am not. But like this snowball effect you have, right? This combination potential. You have that like in a small scale, you have that here. And I love that. That is just great. That is wonderful. It works really well as well. Um, yeah, so um, is there anything I did not like about the game? Well, not really. And um, one thing is the game is really long, right? It is quite long. So this video now, I'm well over one hour in terms of recording for a print and play. I think I have never recorded such a long print and play. So it is a long game. Yes, I had to talk a lot. I explained a few things to you, but still, even when I played it before, I need at least half an hour to 45 minutes for that game. And now it depends. Do you want to play a print and play for 30 to 45 minutes? Or do you rather want to pull out another game like Parks, for example, play that solo? Of course, these are different games again, but still, do you want like uh, like a, ta a board game with a tactile feel where you have like cool game components and whatever? Um, or do you want like just a print and play? It just depends on what you want. Um, I think it's not necessary to long for a print and play, but it is definitely on the longer side. Um, but it's also quite fun. So it just depends on what you are looking for. So the length could turn some people off. The other thing is that the rules were great, as I said, um, but there were still a few things that weren't 100% clear because these rules are so detailed. They are so well made. Like these three, four um, small, um, rules that were not 100% clear um, at the first reading, they should be ironed out just to make these nearly perfect, these rules. That would be great to do. Um, and that is pretty much all that I can say in terms of constructive feedback. I really like this game. This is really well done. Um, I'm saying that a lot about a lot of print and plays that I say, oh, I like the game. But I think this is one of the ones I enjoyed the most because you do have so much decision space here, but still not too much that you're still able to win. Um, and the theme works, the rules are great, and the interconnected systems here work really well as well. So that is great. Um, one thing uh, that I'm really hoping for is um, for the other missions to be different. So one thing I saw in a lot of games, in a lot of print and plays is, oh, I have here, I have two more maps for this game. They are all free. You just pledge two or three dollars, two or three bucks, and you get like three, ma three maps instead of one. That is great. But a lot of those games, it's pretty much the same thing, right? Um, 
the map has a different layout and you have a different mission, but you still do the same thing. Um, so you still you still walk around on a map, for example, and collect stuff. And for that, you need to roll. You still do the same things. You just do it in a different order. And um, there's only one print in play. There, there had only one print in play um, so far that did that really well, and that was Voyages. For Voyages, um, there is a playthrough on my channel. That, I think there are even two playthroughs. I played through the first two maps, I think. Um, two playthroughs on my channel. Check them out if you're interested, because each map is completely different because it's not just a different map, but also there are different gameplay mechanisms in there. And that is great. Almost like only very little, very few print and plays do that. Only very few print and plays actually do that, that they give you new gameplay mechanisms in a different mission. Um, so Voyages did it really well, um, and that's the only print and play that really did that. Island Alone kind of did that with like completely different missions, but the maps were still similar, right? But at least you had like missions that were very different. But still the map was the same, and the gameplay mechanisms were still the same. So yeah, so that did it kind of well, really well only Voyages. I hope for this game, because this is one of the most fun and most well thought out print and plays I have played so far, that here the different missions are really a lot different. I want new rules for the second mission. I want new icons. I want new stuff. I want different surprise gifts. I want really different win conditions. I don't want any victory points. Let's just say um, I have a maximum of five... Um, of five untouched fields and have, I don't know, something else. Like have way different uh, win conditions. Do a campaign with that. Do a campaign with that, that um, these, if you if you are able to um, get these achievements here, these horns up here, um, then let's, uh, let's give you bonuses for the next mission or let's grant you like bonuses for the entire campaign. You can collect these horns to level up specific things that help you during the campaign. Do that. If you do that, then this game would be elevated even further and this could be a really great campaign game. Maybe you have an idea, some idea that um, that you have more variation, that maybe you have like, let's say you have 10 missions and the campaign needs five missions. And there is a specific way to go from mission to mission and you always pick a different mission depending on whatever you do in your game, for example, or what conditions you reach or how many achievements you reach or whatever. Like have. Like have different mission, different mission structure, or a different uh, different missions um, for the entire campaign. And when you play the second time, maybe you do something different and you get different missions, right? Do something like that. That would be really great. I mean, for that you could charge even a little bit more because you would have like a game that people can like play for a while. Um, it would be great for YouTubers like me. I could actually play this game um, more often on my channel without playing the same thing again because the missions are that much different. That would be great. So. Um, yeah, I really hope, I really hope that the missions will vary a lot. Because if they don't, then you have a great game here, but then that's it. You have that game, right? And the other missions are not that different. So I hope that the designer will actually like have some really great ideas here to elevate that experience even further with different missions. And that's all I have to say about the game. I rambled a lot. I played a long time. I explained a lot of stuff. So um, I hope <laughs> I didn't bore you too much. And by the way, I did not check here. Gain an X of 8 plus. What the, does that mean? Uh, X, that was 9. I did that. Clear all field boxes from row 1 to 8. Not quite. There is one box missing. And I got that. 4 plus stamina left. We got that. 24 victory points. We don't have that. So of these 4 achievements, I actually got 2. That is great. So I hope I would get some rewards here for the next mission. Okay. Um, if you're still watching, thank you very much for doing so. I really appreciate that, especially today since this video is so long and it's so hot here. Um, I'm happy when I can get out of this, out of my studio <laughs> in just a few moments. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. If you like this video, why don't you let me know by supporting me, by liking this video, maybe even commenting and maybe even, even subscribing um, in case you like my content enough. If you're not sure if you like my content enough, why don't you head over my, to my channel and check out the other videos there. I have hundreds of videos. There is bound to be something that you enjoy, I hope. And if not, let me know what I could do to maybe add some videos that you might enjoy or some things that you would also see on the channel. I'm always open for suggestions. Speaking of suggestions, why don't you join my Discord server? 
there you can tell me pretty much everything about board games about um about my channel about anything you would like to see um compliments constructive criticism whatever you want and also we can speak about a few other things like video games music cooking like things that i like a lot personally and there's always something going on in the discord server so looking forward to that um to see you there and apart from that thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the very next video all right take care everyone and cheers Thank you.